Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. It's the first Thursday of the month, which means that we're in the kitchen with Across the Fence. I'm joined by our regular chefs, Carolyn Peake from Williamstown and Lynn Jarvis from South Hero. But also with us this afternoon is Kim Greenwood, who's from Duxbury, who is the vice president of the Vermont Beekeepers Association. They've each prepared a variety of honey recipes for us and they all look delicious. Now, before we get started with the recipes, we want to thank Kim for being with us and ask what the role of the Beekeepers Association is. Well, thanks for having me on today, Judy. Sure. The Vermont Beekeepers Association has been around since 1886, wow. which makes us, want, we say we're the oldest beekeeping nonprofit organization in the country. We may not be, but we're right <laughs> up there. We have about 600 members, um, six to seven fluctuates, and our, our role really is to support beekeepers and what they want to do to provide education for them, to help them out, to, to bring them together, to share horror stories and learning experiences with each other. So it's really to promote solidarity among the beekeepers. Now, how many hives do you have? Um, depending on the year, we have between five and ten. I'm, I'd like to have a hundred. My husband would like us to have ten. <laughs> so we're, we're somewhere we'll in the compromise. middle. But <laughs> I, know, I, know, I know that you enjoy cooking with honey. So do you have a favorite recipe you want to share? I have several favorite recipes, okay. but among those are um, these peanut butter honey balls. And these are great to make with children, mm -hmm. especially because it's really just mixing up. So there's peanut butter in there, there's flaked coconut, of course there's honey. And I usually put the peanut butter in the microwave to soften it a little bit and then stir it all up and put some oats in there and then put them into teaspoon or tablespoon balls as I've done today. Put them in the freezer and whenever you need a quick snack, you can grab them as you run out the door. Great idea. That's a great idea. Now, Carolyn, what do you have for us? Well, you know how I always figure life's uncertain, eat dessert first. <laughs> yes. And I have got a... A recipe here that came from Donna Barkham of Colchester and she sent this in because she knows that chocolate is one of my favorites. Well I made this up and I have a new favorite. <laughs> I want to thank you for thinking of me. <laughs> but it's it has um, a half a cup of honey in with the Delicious. the usual ingredients and it's got marshmallows and the chocolate chips and everything and it is smooth creamy it oh like it's velvet. good and my brother-in-law who loves chocolate tried some and he gave it thumbs up too so okay Lynn what have you got for us well thank you Judy I have uh, a maple honey cookie we had such good response from our show last month from maple I decided to combine the two and here they are and if you've never had that flavor combination they're really delicious along with a maple and honey you'll see there's some chocolate chips in here and some chopped nuts and when you try these your taste buds are going to say more please <laughs> <laughs> so they're great with a cup of coffee tea or cold milk um, and also the recipe makes three dozen so you can give some to family or friends and I have a picture of the South Hero post office I stopped on the way down today and left some cookies for them <laughs> at the South Hero post office and I thought you viewers would like to see where your letters addressed to box 188 come in there's the little post office pick them up and I take out your addressed envelopes and put the recipes in and take them back to the post office and there David and Lynn and all the other good folks get them back to you as quick as they can and I just know they're enjoying those cookies as we speak. Well, that's fantastic. <laughs> of course we have lots of delicious recipes to share with you and while our chefs are getting them ready we want to share this tribute to our state insect the honeybee. When a flower blooms, its blossoms are a call for attention and a summoning of winged pollinators to its petals. As you gaze upon the orchard, you realize that the sweet fragrance is not merely something to enjoy, but a struggle to survive, a winged cry of urgency from a thousand, a million honeybees. As crucial as sunshine, water, and air, fragrance is nature hard at work. Boylan, thank you for that. That was beautiful. All right, now, Kim, before Carolyn comes in, I know you have a couple more recipes that you want to show us. I do. Um, my husband works for Cabot Creamery, mm -hmm. and thanks to the farmers of Cabot Co-op, they donated the cheese for today's recipe. But that's Lovely. two things we always have in our house, is cheese and honey. How can you go wrong? And it's also <laughs> what our friends have come to expect when they come to our house, is something cheese made with and cheese honey. and honey, <laughs> or cheese or honey. So in this case, um, this is a great appetizer to make ahead of time. Um, it's really quite simple. Honey gets boiled for about a minute and a half till it thickens up a little bit. And um, I realized today that if you don't cook the honey long enough, it gets a little thin, so the nuts don't stick quite as bit, quite as much. So it's important to 
thicken the honey up and then simply dip the cubes of cheese in it. And I've rolled them, in this case, in toasted walnuts, but you could use toasted almonds, toasted pecans. And you make them ahead, put them in the fridge, and when it's time for a company to show up, you put them out, let them come to room temperature first, mm -hmm. and then you're ready to go. Terrific. It's a surprisingly powerful combination with three simple ingredients. I bet I'm going to try one later. I think so. <laughs> All right, anything else for us? I have one other recipe for okay. you. Um, this is uh, an, a honey cheesecake. Oh. It's a... Um, I see what you mean about the cheese and honey. <laughs> the cheese and honey. Again, the cheese and honey. Cabot also makes cream cheese, so we, got, we often have that in our house as well. So this is an upside-down cheesecake. So when it comes out of the oven, I, you know, you cook them in ramekins, and it makes 12 servings. So again, you can share with friends and, you know, neighbors stop in and say, what is, well, hey, what's that you're making? Mm -hmm. You can say, here, take one home. Um, and <laughs> nice. then, so it's a honey base that's made with sugar, brown sugar and honey and butter, which who doesn't love that combination? Um, and that goes into the ramekin and then the cheesecake gets put on top and it gets baked in a water bath in the oven, just like any other cheesecake. And when you're ready to serve, takes a little finessing. Um, run a knife around the edge and flip it over and serve like that. It'd be nice with some nuts or some berries as well. That's lovely. Well, that's wonderful. Now, I think, Carolyn, you've got uh, some recipes that you're going to show us, too? Oh, yes, I do. All right. So I'll let I'm... you have at it. Okay. I'll just take these with me. <laughs> yeah, and, and I'll take one of the cheesecakes as I leave. <laughs> Well, my first recipe uh, on this, of course, I like to have a meal of something. And the first one is honey orange glazed chicken. And this is, it's right here, and it's a, uh, just your regular boneless, skinless chicken breasts, and then a mixture of honey and uh, orange marmalade. You use that to cover the, the chicken. About half of it you put on the chicken before you bake it. Then after it's almost done, you put on the rest of the glaze and cook it about another 10 minutes. And you've got a really nice chicken and with an orangey honey flavor to it. Now to go with our chicken, I have honey and herb roasted root vegetables. Now you remember last time I had maple root vegetables. Well, this time it's honey. And this is red potatoes and squash and parsnips. Getting those fresh out of the garden now. Uh, garlic, shallots. It's, it's got a whole selection of basically root vegetables. And then there's some fresh thyme in it and you bake that. When it's all done, you take it out of the oven and you put in a mixture of honey and cider vinegar to coat it, and then you're all ready to go. You've got a great vegetable with your meal. Now, another vegetable that you can have with it is a sage honey apple cabbage slaw. And this is just basically your usual uh, cabbage slaw, only you've got cut up or matchstick you know, you cut them like little matchsticks of the apples, and you put in some carrots and some um, onion, things like that, and you have a really nice salad. And then the dressing is mayonnaise and sour cream, cider vinegar, some honey, and some pepper. And again, you've got a nice uh, whole thing here. You have a nice meal. One last recipe that I have and these are so good. These are honey muffins. Now I think when I make some more I may put some raisins in or some uh, craisins or something of that sort but we've had some of these and they are really really good. So I would suggest that you make those up. It makes about 18 uh, depending on the size of your muffin pan but it's a, a very um, a very, very good because one of the things that it uses is oat bran, a cup of oat bran. So not only are they nice flavored, but they also have their, well, they're good for you too. So that, that way you can have a couple of them. Do you know what I put in there? Peanut butter and honey. Mmm, mmm. Okay. <laughs> it is delicious. Okay, that well, works too. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, Carolyn. 
Well, with Mother's Day just around the corner, I decided to make these barbecued honey spare ribs to give you an idea of something that mom might like on her special day. Along with the honey, they're marinated with some ketchup, mustard and steak sauce, and I prefer the uh, barbecued steak sauce. Now I'm gonna put a couple out on our plate right here in front to give you an idea of what they look like. They're very nice and tender and really, really good. Now, the little honey bear here is saying, I think we need a little more honey on these, so we'll put a little more honey on, and you'll get an idea of just how good these might be. There we go. And if you haven't had lunch that year there at home, you're going to really be hungry, I think, just looking at these because they're very delicious. Now to go with these, I have a recipe set in that I adapted from Virginia Hanker of Essex Junction. We thank Virginia for that. And this is for her honey dill coleslaw. And I'm going to put some up on the plate while I tell you about it. It's easy to make because you use the packaged coleslaw mix to which you add a little bit of chopped onion. And I prefer my coleslaw more finely grated, so put it in the food chopper uh, before adding the dressing. It's a very delicious coleslaw, a perfect complement for our ribs. Now to go with our meal, how about some different fruit breads? And I have first this uh, honey apricot bread. It's right here, you can take a look at it. It's mouth-wateringly delicious because along with your honey and apricots, there's orange zest in here and chopped walnuts. And during the baking process, these flavors mix and match to make a, just a really tempting flavor that I know you want to enjoy. Uh, this next one is a recipe set in by Edie Ackerman down in Fairleigh, Vermont. She's one of our loyal viewers. It's her honey prune quick bread. And this is also delicious because the honey and prunes mix very well together along with the chopped nuts. And they're both easy to make at 325 for one hour in the oven. And I decided I would make them both to save oven time at the same time. but. The only drawback was every bowl in the house I had was dirty, so I had a lot of dishes to do. But I hope you'll give these a try. And driving down, I thought, why not combine some prunes and apricots in the bread and see how that comes out. If I'd thought of it, I would have made it to show you today. But if any of you viewers want to experiment with honey and prunes in the bread, let me know. I'd be very interested in how it tastes. Now for dessert, we have these right over here. Uh, these are my maple pecan squares and just take a look at these. Uh, they're quite easy to make. The crust is made with butter, brown sugar, and flour. And on the top is a mixture of pecans that have been tossed with honey, brown sugar, and a little whipping cream. And if you really want to be decadent, take a little of that uh, cream, whip it up, make whipped cream, and put a little on each bar before serving. Now doesn't that look good? And the little honey bear is again saying, a little more honey please. So we'll add just a little honey. And there is a dessert that I know mom will enjoy. I think it's a dessert fit for a queen. Now I mentioned to Carolyn that I love honey and peanut butter. Uh, uh, we just heard Kim say she uh, likes uh, honey right out, of, well I don't, she told me she likes honey right out of the jar. So I like honey and peanut butter, but I have to be careful and make up only a certain amount or I really make a pig of myself. And creamed honey works very, very nicely with peanut butter. And this was made by my dentist, Dr. Stephen Pittman from Underhill Center. And you just mix the honey and put the peanut butter together. And over the years he's become quite proficient in making honey from this creamed honey all the way to beeswax candles and he's also a great dentist. So my last recipe is going to be this honey citrus cooler Judy. It's got wonderful things in it, tea and water and lemon juice and orange juice. And while you're telling the viewers okay. how to get the recipes, we're going to put in this lemon lime soda so we can taste all our, toast all our moms and loyal viewers. Well, as always, there are a couple different ways you can get the recipes. You can go online to the Across the Fence website. Just go to uvm.edu slash extension and click on the link to Across the Fence. You'll find the recipes on the left-hand side of the page. To get the recipes by mail, send $2 and a stamp self-addressed business size envelope to Honey Recipes, Box 188 South Hero, Vermont, 05486. Remember, if you're ordering recipes to include 
two dollars and your stamped self-addressed return envelope. We'll leave that information on the screen while I remind you that our next In the Kitchen segment comes your way June 6th and our theme will be summer fruit recipes which sounds pretty good to me. Here you go. Yeah. So in our closing uh, moments here we're just going to have a toast with our honey citrus cooler to moms who are celebrating Mother's Day on the 12th. Thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. We'll see you again next time on Across the Fence. Cheers. For a video copy of today's program, call toll-free 1-888-ATF-3430. Across the Fence is brought to you as a public service by University of Vermont Extension and WCAX-TV.